joining us now, White House Principal Deputy National Security Advisor John Finer. John, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, we're all just absorbing that uh, historic moment between Secretary of State Blinken and the Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel. Um, can you expand a little bit more on the position of the United States here? The Secretary saying, as long as America exists, we will always be there by your side, talking about Israel. What does that mean now practically in terms of support here? Well, I certainly couldn't put it uh, any better than Secretary Blinken uh, did just now or than President Biden did uh, yesterday and the day before in his remarks uh, about solidarity with Israel. There is obviously a, a deep uh, cultural and emotional uh, connection uh, between our government and theirs, between our, our people and the Israeli people. But the but the, the support that the United States is providing uh, for Israel goes well beyond uh, reassurance, encouragement, and, and comforting. Uh, as you know, the, the president has authorized, and we have now provided a significant enhancement in security assistance uh, to Israel, munitions, uh, other items that have been on their list of, of needs as they conduct this operation in Gaza in response to the atrocious uh, terrorist attacks that have taken place. And we've also moved uh, significant U.S. forces uh, to the region to send an unmistakable signal uh, that no one else should contemplate getting involved in this conflict. Yeah, those carrier fleets moving into the eastern Mediterranean now. Um, so, John, let's talk about the hostages, 150 of them perhaps held inside Gaza. Some of them, you all have suggested, are Americans. Uh, what does that mean for people watching here at home in terms of a possible United States involvement, Navy SEALs, Green Berets perhaps going in to rescue some of them? So this is one of the most uh, difficult uh, aspects of what is going to be a very difficult operational environment. Uh, in, in, in Gaza uh, for Israeli forces, you know, uh, an, an area that is pretty small and that, where 2.3 million people at least uh, are resident, uh, densely populated, uh, and a very difficult place uh, to, to fight and, and an easier place, uh, unfortunately, to hide uh, hostages. And the Israelis have had challenges with, it, with this over the years when <laughs> other Israelis have been uh, taken captive and, and brought into Gaza. So there's an intelligence challenge. How do you actually find these people? And then once you do find them, if you do find them, how do you actually locate them? Either to negotiate their release or try operationally to remove them. But what I can say is at this point, we are not contemplating uh, U.S. boots on the ground involved in that mission. What we have done is sent experts from across our government uh, to the region to consult and advise uh, with their Israeli counterparts uh, to make sure that they find the best way to go about trying to get these people home. Hey, John, good morning. It's Jonathan Lemire. We should note some news there from the Secretary of State saying the number of Americans killed in Israel, that number has now grown to 20 to 25. Um, we've been talking this morning about the lack of Speaker of the House of Representatives and that how that is going to hinder the United States' ability to get aid to Israel in this time of need. Can you give us an update as to what the administration can do now between now and then? What resources do you have? What ability do you have to send things in this interim period? But when will that run out if there isn't a speaker put in place? So everything we've been doing uh, up until now has been without, uh, obviously, any sort of supplemental appropriations, and we have been able to provide uh, significant support, and we believe we can continue to provide significant support uh, for Israel uh, without uh, 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 additional appropriations in the immediate term. But that is not unlimited. Uh, it is our, our strong view, uh, and, and the president has said this, as has uh, Jake Sullivan from the White House podium, that we would like to work with Congress uh, on a package that can provide additional support broadly uh, for U.S. partners, including Israel. And and we'll have more to say about that uh, as soon as it's uh, possible, uh, as soon as the, the House uh, chooses a speaker so we can actually go about uh, getting to this business. So, John, nearly 20 years ago, you covered the war in Iraq for The Washington Post. You are intimately familiar with how brutal Fallujah was, house to house, operationally, militarily. There's no more dangerous, combustible element than house to house operations. So when it comes to Gaza, you've indicated no American boots on the ground have been, pl have been planned thus far. But what are we doing or what can we do technologically uh, and militarily to assist in such a brutal environment in Gaza, assist the Israelis. Uh, so, uh, as you indicate, I, I did spend some time in Iraq. I also spent some time in Gaza in 2009 uh, during the Israeli-Hamas uh, war uh, during that period. And this is just an incredibly difficult place to fight. Uh, you know, the United States can provide uh, intelligence support, uh, can, can provide uh, advice, uh, can provide significant uh, materiel, and already are. Uh, but the Israelis are the ones that are going to be in the lead. They have done this uh, a number of times. It is very challenging, very difficult place. But one thing I will say, uh, taking a step back, is that 
uh, the, the conversations that we're having, how you can go about uh, conducting this, this operation while looking for hostages, while minimizing uh, damage to civilian lives, is sort of the polar opposite of the conversation that takes place on the other side, uh, where Hamas conducted an operation that was intended to take as many civilian lives as possible and is now hiding among a population that it is not going to any lengths at all to try to avoid uh, harming. And in fact, I think on some level they probably believe that harm to that civilian population helps their cause uh, because it will bring uh, the attention of the world in a way that is uh, more negative. So, uh, you know, I, I think it is important to, to, to make the point that we do this in a different way uh, from, from those on the other side of this conflict will continue to. The president has been clear uh, about that, that he's had direct conversations about that with Prime Minister Netanyahu, but they're going to be very hard days ahead, and I don't want to disabuse you of that. John, we're just getting word now after that press conference that Secretary Blinken will meet tomorrow in Jordan with Palestinian President Abbas. What will his message be? So, uh, look, uh, the, the West Bank is going to be uh, a very challenging aspect of, of this period uh, going forward. I think it is President Abbas's uh, desire and goal that the West Bank be kept calm. That is certainly the goal uh, of the United States and, we believe, of the government of Israel. Uh, up till now, uh, things have remained relatively quiet uh, on the West Bank throughout uh, the eruption of this conflict across the border uh, into Gaza, and we hope it stays that way. And I believe that President uh, Abbas and Secretary Blinken will discuss how that can be best done, what support we can offer to the Palestinian Authority as they continue to help provide security uh, in the West Bank. That meeting scheduled for tomorrow in Amman along with King Abdullah. White House Principal Deputy National Security Advisor John Finer. John, thanks for being here this morning. Still